Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with PBS 39 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today we are chatting with Dr. Mark Erickson, president of Northampton Community College. Mark has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Mark, for joining us today. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Community colleges are so important. They've always been important, but I think no time in our country's history has community college been more important to the economic development of regions, to young people seeking jobs. There is an affordability about community colleges that, that uh, four-year programs do not have. Uh, talk about your leadership of this institution and how this institution func functions in Lehigh Valley. Higher education is changing more quickly today than at any other point in our history. Um, I think issues of access and affordability are huge. Uh, issues of workforce development are enormous. And as you look at all those things, agility, you know, excellence, workforce development, and affordability, you see community colleges. So I was lucky enough to be selected as the president at Northampton. And I will tell you, I've never felt so fulfilled in my entire professional life. Not that I didn't have great experiences everywhere else I was, um, but literally I'm, I'm moved to tears about once a week by what I see happening at the college. And um, community college curriculum, and, and this is so important, community college curriculum serves purpose. It serves a, a purpose that changes uh, year to year, decade to decade, and community college needs to, because of its nature, needs to align to the purpose of the community that is served in a very, very tight and interactive right. way. Oh, no question about it. I mean, when I go out and talk to groups, my the first comment I make or the first slide that I show is we are a college of the community, and we are. I mean, we change year to year in terms of what we're, we're offering and what we do based upon the needs of the community we're serving. So, for instance, on the other side of the valley, PPL, you know, they need a new line workers. Six months later, up go the polls and we're training line workers. With changes in the healthcare law, there's a new type of healthcare worker that's needed. Boom, we put together the curriculum and now we provide that sort of training. So, so we're constantly changing. So on one end, I think we provide the workforce for the community. One out of every four high school graduates in this community comes directly to us. 90% stay in the community. So we're training the workforce. Um, and even more importantly, 40% of our students tell us if you didn't exist, I can't go to college. It's unaffordable. We are the most affordable college in Pennsylvania. Um, we're blessed to have a very strong foundation that does private philanthropy and fundraising for us, providing about 750, 800 scholarships annually. Um, so we open doors of opportunity and lift up individuals and families and by extension communities in ways that I've, I've never seen anywhere else I've been. So it's the that's the power. It's the two pieces that are so interesting. You have the vocational uh, piece, mm -hmm. which is really, you know, there are jobs out there, they need to be filled, you need right. people who are trained, and that kind of interactive response, finding out wh where the need is, and then developing the curricula, boom, you're there, you have people in the class, they're getting prepared, and they're getting excited about the possibility of getting a job that is actually open and available. Right. There's that piece. The other piece that has changed, and I think it's really in response to the extraordinary cost that four-year colleges have, is that you have within the community college system this recognition that the way education is provided is far more multidimensional than it was previously. Right. It used to be that the only access to knowledge that you had was to walk in and talk with an expert within a classroom setting. Well, now, expertise is available at our fingertips. We can learn in so many different places. So community college actually, it not only ser can serve a vocational uh, um, uh, function, but it can also f uh, serve a gap filling function that is complemented by people who, who learn from their, from their cell phones, from, their, from the internet, uh, from life, and, and community college just plays this different role, and maybe that role is more aligned to our modern times. Well, well first of all, we're the most agile sector of higher ed <laughs> that I've ever worked in. So we can change pretty quickly, and part of it's our governance structure allows us to move much more with much greater agility. Talk so, about that governance structure. 
Well, the governance structure is simply, you know, when I was the president of a liberal arts college, we had multiple committees embedded in the faculty and the faculty play an important role at the community college as well, but they tended to be pretty cumbersome as a mechanism to move forward change quickly. Well, there were depart predefined departmental definitions and barriers and, and territories. Sure, and well, and some of that exists at the community college too. I, I just think there's an openness to change and evolution and innovation. I think that's part of the culture of the mm -hmm. college that I'm part of. And, you know, I, I try to maintain that and grow that. I mean, we have a big initiative going on with entrepreneurship and innovation right now, but um, it's, it, I, I just think there's a different sort of alignment that allows quicker change around issues as long as we know they're gonna serve our students in our community. Very much the focus of what we do is what does this mean for our students and what does this mean for the community? And, and we're such a diverse place. You know, first of all, we're pretty large. We have 13,000 credit students. If you add our non-credit- 13,000 13, credited students. Credit students, Credited which students. means they're going through a degree program. Right. Um, and then we've got about another 15,000 non-credit students, which means they're in a certificate program, not on a degree path, but they might be training to be a truck driver or a line worker or taking a course in yoga. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty broad spectrum. So it's, we're actually the largest and most diverse college in Northeastern Pennsylvania. 41% of our students are students of color. Um, many, many of our students, about 42%, are first in their families to go to college. 52% um, of our students need financial aid to come to the college. We're the number one producer of associate degrees for Latinos in the state of Pennsylvania. So we, we've got this broad spectrum that we engage. Our youngest student right now is 13. She got an A plus in differential equations and hopes to go on to MIT. Uh, but we also have a 92 year old. So. You know, I, I think what I love about community colleges is the breadth, breadth and depth and diversity of the audiences that we serve. It makes it a rich, interesting place. We're also unusual. We have the only, we're the only community college in Pennsylvania with residence halls. So we have about 600 students that in those residential beds and we have students from 45 countries, 25 states and 53 counties that come to the college. So. So it's, it's an unusually interesting place, different than I would, I think the average American thinks of their local community college. Um, the ways we interact around the world, which I can talk about, are, are pretty extraordinary. So, so you're running a, a $100 million uh, operation. Correct. That uh, the product that you, that you produce every year is educated, more educated, graduated students. Right. Right, there are uh, almost uh, twenty-eight thousand of these of these students who right. who uh, receive that benefit. How are you organized, and how are you funded? Or, well, we we organize ourselves in a very similar way to four-year colleges. So, so we've got you know we've we've got a, an area for business and technology, an area for arts and humanities, an area for the health sciences, and then we've got our education area. Those are kind of the colleges that fit as part and of. And then the you larger. have the administrative core. Then we have the administrative core, and the way we're funded, you know, I, I think. Funding, quite honestly, in this state is a challenge. <laughs> um, you know, most people think you're a community college, so almost all of our funding is public funding. About a third of our total funding is, is public funding. Which means the two thirds is? Two thirds is, is born is, either by the students. We, we're, we're very good at raising grant dollars. Right. You know, we've got a very strong foundation. Private philanthropy helps fill some of those gaps in terms of not the college budget, but support for students that otherwise can't find the support they need to come to the, to the college. So, so about a third, about 23% from the state and about 6% comes from local school districts through taxation. Um, so we're working, on, we're working on that part of the formula. I mean, it, it, thank heavens for Pell Grants. Right. I, I, I just came back from Washington, D.C. yesterday where I was talking to all of our legislators about the fact that Pell Grants are probably the federal government's greatest investment in this country. You know, it opens doors of access. Well, let's talk about that, Pell Grants, because right. Pell Grants have been much in the news, but it's surprising how many people do not understand right. what Pell Grants are. So could you describe Pell Grants sort of in short? 
Well, I mean, what happens at the federal level is lower income students, and there's a threshold line that's right. drawn. If you fall below that line, and this is you know the lower economic strata, you qualify for federal aid, right. um, and it is a grant. It's not a loan, and it can be up to I think right now fifty one hundred dollars. That's the ballpark figure. I may be off slightly. That can be applied on an annual basis to your education. And um, the important thing about this is that. That young person, without that support, will never achieve his or her potential. Right, right. It's it's it, 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 it's it, extraordinary. It it is extraordinary, right. right? It is it is really a light switch, where with the Pell Grant, you can actually have the ability right. to get educated while you're working. By the way, very right. often. Right, uh, but it actually gives you the ability to shine light into your future. Oh no, no, no question about it. And and what we find is our Pell Grant students outperform our overall student body because they are motivated. They are <laughs> once motivated. again, and and they know they have an opportunity. Uh, but you're right; not everybody knows about Pell Grants. We we have something called the Success Express. It's an RV that we put together that goes out into the community to find families and potential students who just don't know what they don't know. Now, I'm, I'm paying those taxes. I'm paying for that Pell Grant. Right. The return on investment for me is phenomenal. Right. Because it's a tiny little sliver of my tax dollars. Right. And that tiny little, little, little sliver ensures that so many people not only can have a future, right. but can make my community better. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It lifts up that particular student, and they can be of whatever age, and their family, and then they buy homes, they pay taxes, they get great jobs, they become, they become part of the workforce. They become employees or employers. Right, right. Dr. Mark Erickson, right. thank you so much for sharing the work of the Northampton Community College here in the Lehigh Valley, and thank you so much for your insights. Well, thanks, Mark. My, my pleasure. Thank you.